Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby here and welcome back to another video. A very special video in a three-part series. We're not at the Carplex. We're not at anywhere in the Midwest. Circuit of the Americas, Austin, Texas. I am back at Skip Barber. Three days this time. Three days school driving in the Formula 4 cars. Super blessed, thankful for this opportunity. Uh, really just super excited to bring you guys along. The first day is gonna be, uh, we're gonna start out with some skid pad and autocross, and then we'll transition and do some lead follow laps in the Formula 4 car for this first episode. So, super excited to bring you guys along. Let's get into it. Throughout all three days of the school, we began with classroom sessions. We discussed topics such as the physics of load transfer, oversteer, understeer, and how to correct the car under those circumstances. We were also prepped on how the skid pad and autocross exercises were going to be done. Next up, we hopped in the van and drove outside the racetrack to the parking lot where the skid pad and autocross courses were set up. In the skid pad exercise, the car was equipped with a DTS, or driver training system. Basically, a ring that goes over the tire to make the tire lose traction at a lower speed, which makes it a good tool to teach oversteer and understeer at a safe speed. I should also mention that uh, all of these exercises were done with professional guidance in a closed circuit, so please don't try this at home. As you can see, the rear of the car would step out, and the driver had to correct the skid and keep the car going in the path of the circle. This was also a great exercise to get the racer inside awake and ready to go for the rest of the school. Then, we moved over to the autocross circuit, a racetrack set up in a parking lot with cones. The autocross exercise tested driver skills on staying on the racing line, braking points, throttle points, and understanding different styles of apexing. Autocross was one of my favorite parts of the day. I mean, you're taking a streetcar and ripping it through a short and narrow road course. And let's just say I've never had this much fun in a Chevy Malibu. And that concluded our early morning exercises as we rode back over to the paddock where we were fitted into our racing gear and into the formula car. Ryan Bjerke helmet, you like the little name tag I did? Thanks Ryan Bjerke, shout out Ryan Bjerke Motorsports. Follow him on the gram. Instead of everyone having custom fit seats because that would be expensive and very time consuming, we used foam padding to get us in the proper seating position. For someone that has never been inside of a formula car, it is a very unique seating position where you're almost laying down. Last step before the F4 lead follows is taking a lap around the track in the Skip Barber van to get familiar with the layout. We will take a closer look at the track later in the series, but we utilized the full course at Circuit of the Americas, the same one used by Formula One, NASCAR, and IndyCar. I spent a good amount of time prior to the trip running laps around Coda and the Sim, trying to be as prepared for this racing school as possible. After lunch, it was finally time for lead follow laps in the Formula 4 car. But before we get behind the wheel, let's talk a little bit more about this machine in depth. The chassis is a MyGal FIA Formula 4 car, which is entirely made out of carbon fiber. 
The highlight of this car's aerodynamics are in the car's front and rear wings, which play the opposite role of wings of an airplane. They keep the car sucked down to the ground and provide great downforce under higher speeds. On the topic of grip, the cars are equipped with Goodyear Eagles and Brembo brakes. Radiators are housed on the sides of the cockpit, while underneath the cockpit you can see the skid block, used to prevent damage to the bottom of the cockpit. To further ensure driver safety, the car is also equipped with items such as a roll hoop, headrest, and a six-point harness system. Under the rear cover is a 1.6 liter turbocharged Ford EcoBoost motor that propels this 1,200 pound rocket to 60 miles per hour in under four seconds. All the shifting is done by a Sadev six-speed sequential gearbox through paddles on the steering wheel. The clutch pedal is used to get rolling from neutral to first, but once you're out there on the racetrack, you don't have to worry about using the clutch pedal. The transmission does all the work for you and even blips the gas between shifts. The Skip Barber F4 car is an absolute beast. The first session was going great until another driver went off the track and brought us in earlier than planned. With all the students having varying backgrounds, situations like that are kind of expected. And that's why we start out going slow before picking up the pace. As the other group took to the track, we looked over footage of an advanced driver on the track to help us learn the layout. We also had enough time to venture over to the stadium section of the course and spectate the advanced group as they ran laps around the track. Before we knew it, it was time for our last lead follow session of the day. How's it going? What up? <laughs> How many people do you think have vlogged from the inside of a Formula 4 cockpit? One. Bobby freaking ATA Cruz. Network. Bobby BFK. Cruz. Well, we're getting ready to go out for our last session of the day in the Formula 4 car day number one. We're going to try if giving it the full send. Fire him up. And only after a few laps, we were brought back down into the pits due to Help. another wreck. Stay in the car. Stay in the car, guys. What did you see out there? Out and up. A lot of nice racetrack. But you know what I'll say is, most racing schools don't teach you 
the very important part of racing is hurrying up and waiting. Split it, skip barber race. Nah, I understand. You know, the, the primary thing here is safety. So we want to make sure everyone's safe and yet can get the most out of this experience. So, granted in, I was coming, it's like- Yeah, go for Brett. It's like sending a kindergartner through kindergarten again. I've already done the one day school just at this, you know, not this track, so. Getting out of our cars? Yep. With the lead follow sessions concluded for the day, we wrapped up in the classroom discussing what could have prevented the accidents and previewing what would come in the next two days. All right, that concludes day one here at Circuit of the Americas. Uh, we were able to get two sessions in the F4 car, not, not a lot of really fast laps, not a lot of laps in the session, but still really cool to be able to learn the track in the Formula car. And, you know, as you guys probably know, as I mentioned, I got to do this at Indy before, so really getting comfortable with the car wasn't really something that I had to establish. Of course, getting you know back used to it again, but, you know, feeling great for the next two days. Uh, we got a valuable track time and ran a lot of laps, not only in the Formula 4 car, but in just the regular street cars the instructors have. So uh, very successful first day in my opinion. I wish we had more laps, but just kind of a product of the system and uh, looking forward to getting at it again tomorrow. So see you guys then.